Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Candy. Sorry, I'm a few minutes late this morning. Of course, I was hunting down that one more piece of paper. <laughs> that one more piece of paper that I wanted to have. Uh, I found it right at right as I was turning around. Ah, uh, I wanted this paper right here. Only because I'm going to be testing out some some different papers this morning for um, some ink. So, got one of these. I already took out the. Um, as you can see, I I already started taking out the uh, the binding in here. Um, couple weeks ago. I just snipped all these, you know, started in, in the middle of the signature and snip, snip, snip. That way, when I want to go use them for uh, something, uh, I have a big, a big sheet like that I can use. Can you hear me okay, Candy? Hi, Barb. Barb, can you hear me okay? It does say my mic's on, so hopefully you guys can hear me all right. Did you bring your coffee or your soda or tea? I can move you for a second here. Hi, Mrs. Gigi. Oh. Uh, Thanks, Candy. Good, good to know everything sounds okay. So I'm gonna turn off my um... playing from Tina's Galaxy A11. <laughs> you hear you hear her in the background. I don't dare say her name. She'll be uh, talking away here. <laughs> Oh, carbonated water. And I, I have I have my water and I have my coffee. I like my coffee very hot. So a few years ago I got one of these um it's a wax warmer. And I, I can't remember what company it is, but you see that? It sits pretty low. And I just set my coffee cup right on. It just happens to fit perfectly on top of here. So that's where I, I set my coffee. Because I get to working on something, and I forget that I even have a cup of coffee there. And the next thing you know, it's cold, and I don't want to drink it. So this works really good for me. I like that. Good morning, Janet. So I thought since I found that piece of paper I was looking for, let me move that out of the way. Um, let me show you what I've, what has happened since the other night? So this is the, the Hummel needle point that I picked up. And <laughs> okay. it says here on the bottom, I'll show you the bottom. If you look 
Look at the fine print down here on the bottom. I'm not sure if that's focusing or not. I'll tell you. It says that it is a 1976 Ars, like A-R-S, Sacra, Jose, Muller, Munich, West Germany. Needlework Interpretation by National Paragon Corporation. NPC, it's a registered trademark, under exclusive license, 385 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York, zip code in USA. So I just wanted you guys to to know how this isn't like an actual Hummel, it's a interpretation of a Hummel, right? Hi, Aunt Beck. So I did um, manage to get all the stitches out that were in here. I worked on that. I finished it uh, Friday after I made that video and uploaded it and whatnot about this whole thing. And um, so I took out all these. I did do a little cleaning on it, uh, but I did not wash it, wash it, because the instructions specifically say dry clean only. So I'm not really sure what I'm going to do about that yet. <laughs> not too sure. I had thought about... <laughs> You know, when I thought, oh boy, uh, this might be, I might not be able to even clean this. Um, I think it'll, I think it's still going to be okay. And, you know, these little rust marks and whatnot, I think will be covered by, you know, something anyway. Not sure what. I did think about even coffee dyeing it or something. but I'm probably not going to do that. <laughs> I think that's a little too risque for, for something like this. So I thought I would show you. Um, I do have all this stuff here, so I might work on that in a minute, but I wanted to show you I was going to... Um, tape off the edges because there is a lot of fraying on here. I cut the fraying off already. You know, it was, it was fraying all along the, the bottom here. So I did cut all that off with just regular scissors. And then uh, these pinking shears that I picked up at an auction a few years back, they don't work very well. So I did start doing the um, the pinking over here, and then I flipped it over and started on this side. And I'll show you. They just, the majority of the time, look at that. They make a liar out of me. So the, it did cut a little bit there, but then it stops. It won't cut anymore. So I go to move it, and it will cut a couple more. It's very painstaking, y'all. I'm just saying. And then sometimes it won't cut at all. It'll just start, like, pulling on the fabric, which is all bad. <laughs> I don't want it to pull on the fabric. See, we're getting a, we're getting a pull right there. So you got to take it out, wiggle it a little bit, try to get it. It just won't go now, see? See, now it won't cut at all. I'm, I'm back to that point again. All right. So I can only take so much of that frustration, right? And then I will cut this with my little fabric scissors here, get that piece off. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put these old 
old ones away and figure out what to do with them at some other time. So I've watched a couple of videos about, you know, how can you uh, sharpen your old pinking shears And uh, there's something about the, um, you know, I don't quite understand it, but it has something to do with how much of this, uh, this inner ledge is left. I forget what they call this right here, but this part in here, and then this part in here. Apparently, if there's enough of that, you could still have them sharpened professionally. Um, I did try a couple of the hacks, you know, the YouTube hacks of uh, cutting with uh, tin foil or aluminum foil and, and things like that, just to, you know, temporarily sharpen them a little bit. Yeah, it didn't work really for, not for these. So what I'm going to do um, now is um, first I'm going to even up this this piece right here. I'm just going to cut this off just so I have a, a more even line. <laughs> it's not quite even, but it doesn't matter. That part does not matter. And then I'm just going to... Put some tape along here, just about halfway. And this is just temporary. The tape's not going to stay on here. It, it will be coming off when this project's finished. I, I do believe it's salvageable. I think it might be a fun project to do. So I got up this morning and it was only five degrees here, you guys. Very cold. Oh, that's wonderful, Janet. You have somebody close by that can sharpen your scissors and tools. Yep. Yeah, it's hard to say. I know there are, there's, um, there might be a place. I, I also have an, like an antique uh, paper cutter. <laughs> and let me tell you guys, I'll bring it up sometime and show you. It, it's not in here with me. It's, it needs to go to, um, a special grinding place. Yeah, it's one of the one of those old, old, old style um, paper cutters. So, a friend of mine who used to take stuff in to have it, you know, sharpened. He said there's a place not far from me to take that and get it fixed. And when I uh, do that. I will see if they can do my pinking shears as well. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. I'm not too sure. They may not do, you know, small things like that. But I do know they, they're supposed to fix, uh, you know, sharpen and align the uh, paper trimmers. So that would be nice to have a nice sharp paper trimmer. I've had it for a couple years. I just never took it in to get it fixed. It's not really usable the way it is. It's not very sharp and it's not aligned right. So we'll have to take that in. Okay, Beck, you have breakfast. I'm running late today myself. I, I'm usually up around 4 o'clock, 4 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, between 4 and 5. This morning, I, I didn't get up until 6 o'clock. 
<laughs> it was that gives me so much less time to to get my my stuff together here. Well, I did. I was watching um, Beth last night. She was live, and um, she had a lot of fun games. Um, but I've never seen those games before, so I was watching. And I was learning about the games and uh, how you do them and all that. And while I was doing that, I was, you know, in the background here, straightening up my, hi, Cheryl. Uh, I was straightening up my um, drafting table here. Yeah, I'm back in, in my regular spot where I normally make videos or, you know, I go live or sometimes I substitute teach in my um, school district and we're still remote. Uh, fully remote online here. So I, I also do my classes from this spot <laughs> with the students. And um, it just makes it easier to have like, you know, one, one location that, you know, is already set up and not have to move things around and because it takes a lot of time to figure out how you want things to begin with, right? <laughs> so, yeah, Beth's was fun last night. I, I really enjoy the lives. I, I missed a lot of them last week. So I, I had a lot going on last week. Um, so, now I am... Uh, going to finish taping this off and then move on to something else, okay? So this tape is old Scott's. It's it's Scott's masking tape. It's very old. <laughs> so I kind of take it slow, take a piece off. Don't try to pull too much at one time. Yeah, it all just falls apart. You know, starts ripping and sticking to itself and all that. I have a dog and she is 14 years old now and she's a German short hair pointer mix and she's roughly about 85 pounds 80 pounds maybe she's she's a big girl she's not too big and uh, this week has been you know, this this whole last week has been really rough with the, the weather here. Not only has it been cold and, you know, the snow, I don't really mind that so much, but there is a layer of ice on top of all the snow. And it's a thick layer of ice. It's been there for that, it, you know, this condition I'm telling you about has been you know, like six days now, five, six days. I don't even know. Long time already. <laughs> it hasn't gotten warm enough to even melt it yet. And um, so when I take Birdie outside, you know, she got to walk around the yard a little bit. And she's just heavy enough that she can walk on top of the on top of the icy snow. But then as soon as she goes to take another step, it and she falls through it. And so on. That just repeats. Um, I feel so bad for her. I try to walk her where she's already been walking, so that doesn't happen as much. And um She's fell a few times, uh, almost every day. She, I would say she's fallen about 
Oh, maybe four, well, no, maybe more than that. Maybe five or six times she slipped on the ice. Icy, it's icy snow. You know, you just go to take a step and then the next thing you know, you're down. Well, that's what it's been like for Bird. It's been tough for her. One second, guys. Okay, I had to mute you for a minute because I'm still coughing in things here, so um, I don't want to cough in your ear. So yeah, it's been rough for Bird. I, myself, I have not fallen this year. And knock on wood, because I cannot take a fall. I really can't. I'm more... I. I'm more stressed out about the thought of falling than probably how bad it would be. I don't know. But last year, when, no, it, it's been closer to almost two years. I, I took a really bad fall. And it took me like a year and a half to recover from it. You know, I messed up both of my shoulders and messed up my... Um, my back and my hip and it was all bad so i just i know i can't i cannot take a fall so i'm very cautious <laughs> you know overly cautious that i don't fall and i feel bad for bird you know she can't really take a fall either you know she's 14 and not in the best of health herself, so I worry about her falling. But here's the thing. We're getting um, a, a warm front coming through later this week. And it's going to be above 35 degrees. <laughs> above 35 for about five days at least from what I could see on the weather. So my hiking buddy, I talked to her um, yesterday and this morning is we're planning on going out on a hike um, to, you know, it's one of the normal spots that I typically go to and we're going to go harvest some chaga. So chaga is a mushroom. Well, kind of, yeah, it's, I guess it's considered a mushroom. But it's very hard and it grows on a birch tree. It makes a great uh, tincture for herbal remedies. Chaga. And it's full of uh, flavonoids and polyphenols. So it's pretty great. Well, here's the thing. Since it's winter, the birch trees are dormant right now. And when the trees are dormant, that's the best time to harvest chaga. That way it won't injure the tree it won't shock the tree to take it off. They will, you know, not be damaged by uh, the chaga coming off. Not really a good idea to do it at any other time of the season when the tree is not dormant. Although, uh, in emergency, a small piece of chaga can be taken off. It's just not the whole entire thing. Uh, other seasons. So my buddy and I, we're going to go probably Thursday or Friday and go harvest that. Hopefully it's still there. <laughs> Nobody else came upon it and knew what it was, right? And um, I'm going to try to 
to make a video of the whole thing. So I'm going to finish taping this off here. I got one, one more side to do here and we cut this in half. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, Bertie, she had a sister. Uh, her sister's name <laughs> was Sissy. And I had them both since they were about three weeks old. So, you know, many years uh, I had Bertie and Sissy. <laughs> Somebody, um, when, when they were three weeks old, uh, they were dumped in an overnight drop box at one of our local um, animal shelters. And it was uh, late, I want to say it was late October. Uh, this past October would have been 14 years. And it was below freezing that night. And somebody, you know, dro drove up to the, to the shelter and dropped these two little puppies that were only three weeks old into the drop box in a, in a little box and left them there. So I started, I, I already had a Husky at the time and, uh, he was, I think Neo was probably about four. He might have been four at the time. And uh, got these two puppies. And I was supposed to be fostering them. And they're German short hair pointer mixes. So they they kind of they kind of look, I don't know, you know, kind of like a pit bull mix. And at the time, in, in my area, uh, pit bulls were being put down on a regular basis uh, at shelters. Now, that's no longer happening here. Uh, they do try to home pit bulls here now, like they do. It's, you know, breed specific, okay? That's what we had going on here. But it's gotten a lot better. I will give them that. Anyhow, I got this taped off and I am going to put this away for now. And what I'm what I'm going to do is um, I'm not going to fold it. I am going to just gently roll it. And like a little little tube. I don't want to flatten it or anything. So I ended up with Birdie and Sissy, uh, gave them those names, bottle fed them uh, from this uh, milk for puppies from, uh, you know, from the uh, pet store, whatever, the vet. And let's see, where is that? Here's the paper clip. Yeah. And they were my first... Uh, Foster failure. <laughs> yeah, I kept them. Uh, so as they grew up, uh, Sissy ended up looking more like a Mastiff German short hair pointer mix. She got to be up to 95 pounds. She was rather big. And Birdie looks more like uh, the German short hair pointer mix. Um, they are both pretty rambunctious, but two years ago, uh, right before Sissy passed away, she, she'd got cancer and had some growths that couldn't be treated. And, um, right before Sissy passed away, like, a you know, this was, uh, just, uh, a few weeks beforehand, she saw something at night when I had her on uh, a leash that has like a, a 20, 20 foot, I believe, uh, 
range on it. And I was up on the porch and I, we have those, uh, it's an old style porch and the replacement handrails are those old metal water pipes. And, um, she saw, she was way out on the line. It was, you know, as dark as like eight 30 at night. I didn't see what was going on. And the next thing you know, she took off running and, um, caught me off guard. So I, I hit that metal pipe banister with my hip. Uh, and this is, you know, like I was on the top of the porch and then <laughs> went flipping through the air from there. And, uh, you know, with uh, my hands over my head being drugged through the yard. And um, by the time I, I landed in the yard and, and she started dragging me in the grass, I was like, oh, no, I just got to let go. <laughs> so I did. I, I let go. And I learned an important lesson after that. So one of my friends was talking with me about this whole experience not long after it happened. And he says, I know it sounds rather counterintuitive because you spend so much time uh, trying to hold on to them and control them when you're out on the leash. He says, but uh, it comes a point when you have to learn to let go or you're going to get dragged. And I was like, wow, that's, you know, I'm thinking about it, you know, it, uh, how it applies everywhere in, in life. Sometimes we do have to let go or, you know, be willing to be dragged because uh, that's what it, it gets like sometimes, right? So yeah, that was an important lesson for me. It's It's been almost two years now. It, it took a year and a half for both of my shoulders. They were, they were dislocated. I went to a chiropractor. I had x-rays, all that stuff. Uh, both of my shoulders were dislocated. I had them put back in and they've not been quite right since. And um, then... Uh, my uh, hip had a large contusion on it, and uh, I fractured my sacrum. Uh, it just split down the center. Just all kind of problems, you know. That fall was so bad. And so uh, I'm, I'm glad to be feeling a lot better now with... Um, all that, and I'm very careful not to fall. I am just overly cautious, you guys. Because, you know, I don't want to spend another year uh, practically incapacitated, you know, when you can't use your shoulders and it hurts to walk and all that other crap. It's not fun. <laughs> I'd rather feel good like this. So, um, this last season uh i was out on the trail and the year before i could not go at all i did try uh i went out on the trail uh a few times the the previous season like you know in the spring all right i could not do it i get out there park my car get out of my car and almost get on the trail and shake my head and say I can't do this. I just can't do this. And I turn around and I go right back to my car and get in my car and I leave. And that happened, you know, quite a few times in the uh, spring. And uh, I just gave up. I, cu I couldn't do it that year. So I didn't go in the summer. I didn't go in the fall, winter. And then last spring, I started going out hiking again. And it was going pretty well. Yeah, it's like, yeah, okay, I like this because I had plans and I wanted to get some things and and um, so I got back out there um, this past spring and then I started hike hiking with uh, one of the ladies that are, you know, lives in, in my she's very active in my community as well 
and uh, her and I started hiking together. And uh, we did a lot of hiking, a lot of harvesting, got a lot of, a lot of good things to work with. Uh, kept me busy all through the spring, uh, summer, and the fall, a little bit this winter. Um, I, before I made this YouTube channel, I did do some recordings of uh, some hikes that we did this year. Um, they're mostly mushroom uh, videos uh, in deer, local wildlife and such. And um, I never uploaded them. What happened was I ran out of space on my phone and had to make space and wasn't quite sure what I was doing. So <laughs> I deleted a lot of things. I think they're there still somewhere, maybe in the cloud or something. I don't know. But um, I will be finding out. I'm gonna, I'll check that out. And But, there, you know, there's always lots of uh, new videos to be made, right? <laughs> and uh, so I had an idea. <laughs> of course, I had an idea. <laughs> uh, I had an idea. the other day and wanted to see how this would work out because I've been thinking about um, making my own ink and I've watched quite a few videos on how to make ink uh, to write with. Can you all see what I'm doing over here? I, I think I'm in frame, right? I need to move this over here just a little bit. How's that? All right. That was my inky ink. And what I tried yesterday, I tried this, uh, is um, move these. I'm going to try this on just a regular, uh, let me get this. It's a little bit more smoother surface to write on. I'm going to see how this does. Not bad, really. So what this is, is the tincture that I made. And this one is the Black Walnut Hall. And what I noticed was it's a it it shows up a very very light green. Now keep in mind my nib was nowhere near primed yet. This was such a, a very 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 faint. It's a, it comes out a very light green, but on the olive tone. I did see that video, Janet, of um, Mary's Ink. Yes. So, not sure you can see that, right? It's not sure if it's focusing. Anyhow, this, this is not ink that I made, all right? This is, I'm trying out this this is a black walnut hull tincture and it's an alcohol tincture i bottled it on september 29th 2020 and i harvested the here are the black walnuts themselves okay 
this is what's left. I'll take a piece out and show you, but um, after I collected them and put them in vodka, they sat for about 90 days in a cool, dark place. Yeah, this was full of, full of vodka all the way to the top. And then after the 90 day mark, roughly, I strained it through this Micron bag. And if you're inter interested in um, these Micron bags, like where to get them, let me know. And uh, I'll put it in the link uh, after this video. I've got, I got these on Amazon, by the way. But it's just a micron mesh bag, and it catches all those particles, all of them, for the most part. So I, I also use it for when I make uh, avocado dye and, uh, and things like that. So I had an idea. You see, this, this didn't come out very dark, right? So... I think what I'm going to do, since I have, you know, all this left and it's still, it's saturated in vodka, you know, it's not going to go bad. I'm going to put regular rubbing alcohol in here and just let it sit and see what happens. See if it will make an alcohol ink. I think it will, but... Mm, it's worth a try, right? Because I do want to see if I get something darker, a little bit darker green. And that would be so pretty. So that was a little experiment. I learned something from there. The color is not very saturated. I think it would be, you know, make a nice, um, at this point, you know, if I were to use it now, I could possibly do something like um, some really small script writing, you know, just make it um, just random. And I think this would make a nice background because it's so subtle in the color, it could be used as a background and then, um, you know, just like as a, a background, like text, you know, and then stamp over it or, uh, collage over it, maybe put some, um, I like, anybody else like to, to stamp their leftover, um, napkin papers, you know, the white part that you pull off. I like to stamp mine and then, uh, cut them out, cut the, cut them out after I stamp them and then decoupage those. I think those are fun too. That would be cool for something over top of this. You know, it'd be I think it would be cool. It'd be a cool background. Yeah, I think there's something I have to add to this, um, some kind of uh, gum, I forget what it's called, but there's a, a couple different 
chemicals that can be added to ink like this and it it makes it grab better and I'm going to just because I don't have a bottle of, I don't have I don't have a bottle of water over here I'm going to spray my brush and with my water bottle I'm going to spray it and spray it off I just clean it like that. Anyway, they put the uh, they put a couple different chemicals in ink, and it stabilizes it. Okay, I'm gonna see what am I catching up here on the Orient Express. Let me scroll up. Oh, Cheryl, it's your first um, fountain pen. You got it yesterday. Have fun with it. That's all I could say. Have fun with your fountain pen. I enjoy it. Oh. Got to get up out of that chair for a minute. I've been sitting there for 45 minutes already. I'll move my chair over. I'm just going to stand for a little while. Let me mute you for a minute so I can have a coughing attack. Okay, all back. <laughs> all right, what else? Get a good cup of tea and sit in a comfy chair, a comfy spot. Oh, oh yeah. Cheryl, I heard about those. Uh, I saw some of those virtual tours. They have them going on in... Um, Art museums and things, uh, places you'd like to visit. Uh, yeah, I've seen a couple of them. They are really sweet. <laughs> Thursday and Friday is going to be 45 and 50 degrees here. It is going to be unbelievable. I am like, yay, I can't wait to get out here. Oh my gosh. I really can't. I can't wait to get out on a trail. And by it being warm earlier in the week, um, most of us should, be, I hope, be safe to travel on. Yeah. Well, I, I, here's what I was working on when um, this is another another thing I was working on when, when Beth was live last night. So I started coloring this. It's from a coloring book. I'll show you which one. But um, I started it a few days ago, and it's an it's an adult coloring book. Um, I've been watching so many videos on with people that color. Oh my gosh, you all know we we watch them, right? And um, so. I thought I would just, uh, that's, that's the set I'm using right there. And um, these were uh, on my Christmas list one year, a few years back. My parents got them for me for, uh, for Christmas one year. 
So all I'm all I'm doing now is let me move my light a little bit here. So I don't have so much of a shadow. I'm going to um, I'm just working on the shading now. You know, I am no pro at this. From what I understand, about color pencils is it's about layering, putting down layers and layers of color to do the shading. So that's kind of what I'm doing is just, you know, putting more layers of color down and and shading in what I already have done. And that's that's what I'm doing. Let me know in the comments. Is the table moving a lot or the the camera? I don't know. I still didn't get that webcam. Uh, I need to. I need to get a webcam. <laughs> That's what I do, Janet. I I have everybody on the, the big TV. <laughs> I have my laptop hooked up to my TV. So I can see better, you know. It's it's a lot easier for me. I don't have, um, maybe in a few weeks I will, but I don't have a, a, a water brush blender. And I don't have any of the um, solvents um, that I've seen can be used on colored pencils to kind of blend blend out the colors better. I was thinking, since I'm not really, you know, not really um, doing this one for anything in particular other than using my colored pencils. Okay. And I'm thinking I might just use uh, A little paintbrush and some water and see how that does. What do you think? You see where I'm I've been doing more shading just in through here. None of the rest of it has any shading going on yet. Mm. Mineral spirits. Um I think I have mineral spirits. Yeah, it's, I believe it is uh, coloring for joy. Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot, Janet, thanks for the reminder. Um, This one's from uh, Beautiful Vintage Creative Coloring for Grownups. Uh, it's a Barron's Creative Coloring for Grownups, Beautiful Vintage. Okay, so originally $12.99, and then Ollie's had it for $1.49. So this is the this is the book that this one came out of. That's what the cover. See the cover? If you're looking for it, that's what it looks like. And there are some really nice pictures in here. Oh, <laughs> what's my, my mom, she knows all the flowers. Like 
if she doesn't know a flower, it probably is just, I don't know, doesn't exist. So I was texting her yesterday. I sent her a picture of this and I asked her, well, what do you think this, what do you think this flower is? What's it look like to you guys? So we went with the Xenia. Anybody else think this looks like Xenia? Yeah, that's that's what I that's what mom and I are thinking. They look like zinnias. Yeah, we have a couple of we have a couple of ollies around here. Yeah, you think so too, Beck? Gamasol. Yeah, I don't. I don't have gamma sol, but I do believe I have uh, mineral spirits like um, oh heck, what's it called? I can't think of it, but I do believe I mineral oil. Is it the same or no? Yeah, dahlias do have more of a pointy petal. <laughs> Gluing for joy. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, it's been relaxing. It's helped me de stress this week. I, I had so much uh, kitchen work to do, cleaning the kitchen. Oh my. Not one of my, I don't like to clean the kitchen. So I'd go clean the kitchen for a little while and I'd come back up here and had color for a little while. Then I'd go clean the kitchen for a little while and then I'd come back up here and I'd color for a little while. <laughs> uh, I reward myself with art. <laughs> All right, so let's try this. Let's let's see how this moves around. This, you know, there's been so much. Uh, I don't know. Give me a minute, guys. I'm looking for a brush. I used a brush last night and uh, that's a good way to do it. Uh, I'm not sure, Cheryl. <laughs> uh, a good way to do what? Oh, just for the fun of it? Just Oh, do my housework. Yeah, I reward myself with art. <laughs> I forgot what I was talking about for a minute there. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, let's just see what happens, right? I have no special reason for doing this picture other than I I wanted to try out a couple different things, you know. I like to experiment. Oh, one thing I, I did find out was, man, you can't use much water. I think that's what those little water brush pens are great for. Uh, maybe they control the water better. I don't know. I need something that's not going to take up a lot of water because I found that out last night when I was just messing around on this card, you know. Yeah. Woo. 
it just too much water yeah i don't want to saturate the paper so do you guys see that a lot of um a lot of creators right now are doing the, their uh they are doing their color pencil uh swatches and showing which ones are like water paints uh no, they're not supposed to be water paints but um they're not supposed to be blendable but i'm gonna tell you <laughs> uh they are that's that's been the finding they are blendable. So I didn't do a great big test myself because you see that? Uh, this one right here. Let me get there. Uh, where is it? This one. There. Above, above that blob. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's all grainy right here. Let me, there we go. It's all grainy right here. And then right there, it's, it blended with just a little bit of water. So, and those are Prisma. The, it's the old 72 set. I can't vouch for any other ones. I did see a lot of creators in the last two weeks. Oh my goodness. And they were live. Oh, I love Fly Lady. Yes. Lace up your shoes. Let me scroll up here. <laughs> Cheryl, it's so funny. I, I have a little sister. Her name is Cheryl <laughs> as well. My little sister, she does not craft. Everyone in my family claims to not be a crafter. I am supposedly the only person that could do this kind of thing. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, this is blending nice. Okay, so here's a couple things I learned. I'll tell you guys if you if you miss this about um, the colored pencils and. So, if you do this water effect on them, you have to have just, oh, see, this this is not like good paper either. So it looks like the paper may be, I'm not sure. If that's paper, is that color? I'm not sure. Regardless. What I learned was that if you have a dryer, uh, uh, a heat, a heat gun, these can be heat dried after after they have been treated like a watercolor, and you can layer more color pencil color on top of it after it's dry. And you can re repeat that as long as the paper will hold up. Now, of course, these coloring books, they're not, you know, meant to be treated as watercolor paper. And I'm sure they will break down rather quick. 
So I don't want to get them overly wet here. I should really want to see how how the spreadability, you know, how, how the blending is. It's blending nice. It's it's taking out that. I guess a, a little goes a very long way with this is important. Now, I'm using a rather stiff brush because I find that the, uh, well, you know, the, this brush, it, it's just too flimsy and it holds too much water. And, and I don't want it to hold a lot of water. I'm taking a lot of excess water off before I even go, go in here. Because I don't want puddles of water. I'm just blending, blending, blending. Okay, that's all. I do not have a heat gun, so we won't be doing any of that today. I have a... A blow dryer. I don't use it as a heat gun. I just let... I usually use my heater vent, to tell you the truth, because my heater's been cranking. I use it for drying all kind of things. You know, I set up little drying racks and dry right there in front of the heater heater vent. You know, coffee dyed paper, avocado dyed paper, and some tea dyed paper. You name it, goes right in front of that heater vent. Let me turn this. Yeah, it might. Uh, I don't know. So you can... I'm sure you can't see it. I did not wipe this off yet. So let's see how well this focuses. So I mean, look in here. You can even see the little flakes of paper coming off. I didn't wipe it off yet. So I'm trying to go very light here, but I'm gonna tell you, it is blending very nice um, <laughs> with no little to no effort blending very nice i like it and i like the effect and i think that's what i wanted to see was well i like it yeah i do but it also takes up it will lift the color um, it just lifted that it lifted that whole whole piece of color right off of there uh, Thanks, Janet. How many of you find that you know, your art and your creativity interchangeable? with your surroundings, you know, within nature. I feel that there's a lot of crossover in my life in between the, um, the plant life and the trees and uh, the animal kingdom. Anybody watch um, Peter Draws? 
his late his um one of his latest videos, I think it was from yesterday. He talks about uh, how there's really not a separation between us and nature. We make, you know, we, we perceive that there are these separations. Of course, he's drawing the whole time. He's talking about it. I find that to be true in my life, that um, my creativity, whatever, you know, however it's uh, manifesting or what have you, it, you know, it's, it's from things all around me. Mineral spirits. Hmm. I I really don't think mineral oil is the same thing. I'm I'm thinking about it here as I'm doing this, and I think they're two different things. This is actually kind of fun. It would be interesting to see what happens. I like how it's. It's blending compared to, uh, I'm not thrilled about the spots where it actually lifted off the paper. Mm -hmm. And, okay, so let me show you the back here. You see, oh, where is it at? Is, it gonna, is that going to show up? Oh, God. Can you see that wet spot on the back? I really didn't use that much water. My brush was kind of dry. But it's not watercolor paper, y'all. It's just regular. Um, it is kind of heavy. But it's not, you know, it's not like copy paper. It's thicker than that. So maybe less water. I don't know. Maybe if I dab the... Uh, dab the brush off even more before I go in. Um, maybe I would have less of an issue. Let's see. Yeah. It still, it still blends really nice, even, you know, dabbing it on a piece of cloth first, okay? It's hardly zero water. Okay, that is really cool. Yeah, I'm having fun with this one. This <laughs> okay, Cheryl. Well, candy, they're they're not supposed to be water water soluble. You would think that they're not, because they're not supposed to be. Indeed. <laughs> Here, um let, let me move the color the color picture out of the way for a moment here because I, I don't want to get it too too mucked up right all right so that was just this is this is the color I'm, I'm using right now by the way uh, that one particular flower is the um, magenta. PC 930, this one, let me see. So that's the one that I'm currently using over there. 
And I'm just going to, I want to make a pretty big, big swatch here for you. They, they come out so nice on you. <laughs> See, it's coming out all smooth on here, of course. I know it's a, a rather large uh, swatch here, but I can't use a lot of water on here because this is not watercolored paper. This is just regular notebook paper. And I'm going to dab off most of the water here. All right. So you see how grainy all that is right there? Like the whole, whole thing is not doesn't have much color and it's, a, it's very grainy right I'm just gonna do I'll do half of it here make sure I don't have too much water here it's moving folks I want you to see this it's just a moving 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 right I was actually excited about it I know a lot of people are not happy about this uh, they did not want their color pencils to be water soluble. Um, me being the crazy experimental type that I am, I enjoy it. So. Let me see what we have there. What do you think? You see, it moved all the color, uh, moved the color up and all over. No, I'm reading the chat. <laughs> yeah. I'm having fun with it. But they do, they move. I mean, the color moves and moves and moves, and... I am not using a lot of water here, very, very little water. But since this is a, a rather stiff brush and not watercolor paper, the, the paper is breaking down, you know, it's not meant to get wet. Get some nice, it, it even changed the, the hue to more like a fuchsia. Where are you, Mrs. Gigi, in Europe? Ah, uh, Sweden. I think I remember you saying that the other day when I was watching your your video. I just I couldn't recall. Yes. Well, what I'm going to be doing uh, this week, what's what's coming up for me is, um, of course, I will be rewarding myself with working on this. 
and um, I will take the um, I will take all the uh, from the kit from the Hummel kit. I'm going to take all the yarn out. So we have uh, a curl yarn in here. And there's also a, a embroidery uh, floss, and not very much. So I'm going to separate all these by the color that they are, see what I need that might need uh, replaced, and um, get the color code going for those, get it all set up. Maybe I'll, I can... I might be able to get working on this one day this week, uh, I hope. There are 20 colors here. There's only five different stitches. Um, this should not be too hard to get this set up and get started on it, maybe. We'll see. But uh, I also need to um, get some other things accomplished around here. So that's what I'll be doing this week. Uh, mailing out paper packs this week from uh, last week's live and the five people that um, won the, um, the books last week for Defy's uh, third birthday op celebration. And um, those will all be going out this week. I'm working on the, um, you know, getting them all put together for shipping and um, so, that, so that we could get the best deal on on shipping them this, this week coming up. I did send out emails to the people that emailed me that were in the chat that, you know, everybody that was at the live last week for uh, Defy's uh, hop. Um, there were 20 people in, in my chat and only half of the people sent me an email with their mailing information. So if you, if you're here today and you were here last week for the, uh, defy, birthday hop celebration, if you were in my chat last week, send me an email no it's not too late Cheryl if if you were here in my chat last week um, for De for Devi for device um, birthday. Yeah, there's my my email. Send me an email with your um, mailing address, and I will send you out a paper pack. Everybody that was in the chat last week, everybody gets a paper pack, no matter what. All I need is the mailing information. That was the only requirement was was that you were at, in the chat that way i would know no problem cheryl yeah just send me an email i was rather stunned that you know half half of the people did not send me an email um, but that's okay maybe some people you know you know, they, they have their reasons for not wanting paper packs, or maybe they just didn't understand. I'm not sure. But, uh, yeah, that's that. They'll be going out this week. And even if there's a few, a few stragglers that just happened to... Uh, I haven't seen the video. I, Janet, I, I, saw, I saw that Lizzie 
posted the video. I'm, I'm going to watch that later today. I think I'm only going to go about five more minutes. It, I've been live for one hour and 25 minutes, so let me make this an hour and a half today. And I want to thank all of you for coming and hanging out with me, having coffee, chatting and crafting, whatever crafts you're working on. I hope you have a peaceful and happy and healthy Sunday. If it's Sunday where you're at. <laughs> Whatever day it is, right? And those who watch the replay later on, thank you. Thanks for joining us. And you can always come back and leave a comment. Oh, Candy, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm glad you guys are here. I was just doing a bunch of random things this morning. Uh, thank you, Barb. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Gigi and Janet. I'm glad you guys enjoyed enjoyed the stream. I enjoy being here. I really do. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't really matter if it's if it's in the chat because I've I've put it in my description before, so people that can you know email me if they want to, but yeah, that's silly. I can't delete it right now. It's it's not giving me that option. It's <laughs> giving the it's giving me the option to put myself in timeout. Isn't that ridiculous? I, I'm in Streamyard. I'm not on YouTube. I stayed in StreamYard. Yeah, after um, after Beth last night uh, was live, I watched her live. That was a lot of fun. And I watched um, some uh, tutorials on YouTube uh, for some tips and hacks for live streaming on um, StreamYard. And... Uh, I only watched a couple of them. I, I still don't. I don't know all the ins and outs of StreamYard. And I'm just winging it for the moment. It got to be too much last night. I ended up putting on Peter Draws, one of his videos, and watched him draw and listened to him. And then I went to sleep. So, and then this morning, getting up late, I, I just didn't do much. I had the broadcast already set to go and go live and everything. But, um, all right, you guys. Well, I hope everyone has a great week coming up. I mean, take it easy. Take care of yourself. Just know I'll be doing the same thing myself. I'll be taking it easy. I will be taking care of myself and getting things done that I need to take care of. And thank you all for being here. And until next time, have a great day, everybody. Bye.